What's up guys? I hope you're having a awesome day. I found a new trail recently. It goes for about uh, eight or nine miles that way and about three or four miles that way. So kind of random, but before I actually go into this review, I just want to say that I'm always looking for new trails and one of the ways that I find them is by using uh, Google Earth. And I look for like nearby rivers and like streams by where I live and nine times out of ten there's going to be a trail by there. And I'll just zoom in and kind of find it. So that's how I do it because I, I feel like it's, it's always hard to just like do the research and find it on Google like like a search query like that thing really comes up for me. So anyways, hope that's helpful for you guys. If you have any other tips on how to find cool local trail local trails by like wherever somebody is. Leave them in the comments because I'm always looking for something new and I'm sure you guys are too. So, okay, with that out of the way, today we are going over the Hilltopper City Ultra. So this is the bike right here and this bike runs for $11.99 in this configuration here. It's got a 36 volts, 11, point, or 11 amp hour battery and a 350 watt motor. But what's cool is this price point can be lowered even further all the way down to $8.99 by choosing a lower amp battery, lower amp hour battery and a lower wattage motor. So I think 250 watt motor and uh, I think it's like a 9.9 .9 amp hour battery or something like that. Um, it lowers the price 899, which is cool because this is definitely already an affordable bike um, and being able to have those options to lower it even further, I think just is, is kind of nice. So the deal with this bike is, um, this is again from Hilltopper and this is a company that has been around for a while. These guys have been out since 2008. Court actually did a review a while back on the Hilltopper kit back in 2014, so a while ago now. But that's how these guys have started is by doing kits. So they would typically just provide, you know, the front wheel like this. They provide the battery and the motor cables or the, uh, the, the power cables and then the customer would hook up themselves and then just recently here in 2017 they came out with i think a folding mountain bike and then just this year the city ultra this one they came out with so yeah kind of cool these guys have these guys are established they've been out since like i said i mean 2008 that's that's a while especially i feel like nowadays with this industry it's like you know new companies popping up left and right so it's cool that these guys have have been around for a minute and What's also cool about this company is they're located in Seattle, Washington. So they're a, a US based company. And even though the majority of their sales are direct orders, so they, most of their sales come from online, they do have about 50 actual dealers, physical shops um, around the US. So you know, if anybody does wanna check out these bikes like in person before they buy, that might be an option depending on where you live. So that's kind of nice. Now, before we really kind of just jump in here, I do wanna call out some some stuff about this bike so this is this is the frame size and the color that it comes in right here this is an 18 inch frame and this color is kind of like it's almost like a luminescent aqua or like a pearly teal or something it reminds me of the kind of that glowy paint on the toyota prius if you guys are familiar with that but this right here is the only frame size and the only color that this company comes with or this this, this bike comes with so you know this that kind of limits i think the potential for you know various rider heights and, and sizes and stuff it, it may not fit for everybody so you know that's just something to kind of keep in mind right off the bat here with this but you know the the upside is you know because you, you because of course you know you could just grab a frame of your choice you know grab this the the kit from the company from Hilltopper and then just connect it yourself to a frame that fits you perfectly you know maybe a color that is exactly what you're looking for However, there is always that chance, like maybe the wheel won't fit just right. And it's just added complexity to kind of piecing parts together. So one of the, the I think the main benefits of grabbing this, this whole setup, to, like the, whole, the bike and the motor um, from Hilltopper, is just that, you know, everything fits right. Like this is kind of designed to be, to go together. So yeah. Let's go and start up here with the, with the motor on this. So this is again, a 350 watt, hub motor it's geared this is from Bafang it's Hilltopper branded but it's a it's a Bafang motor it's got 45 newton meters of torque and yeah this motor is it's it's still pretty efficient it's more powerful than you know 250 watt but obviously not as powerful as like a 500 watt but it's it's pretty peppy like when I hit the throttle on this thing like it, it does it does help me 
top the hills, right? And maybe that's why this company is called Hilltopper. I don't know, but you know, the throttle, the 350 watt motor, it's it's good enough for, for getting up moderate hills and, and, it, and it does really make a difference, but it's not so powerful that it's going to drain my battery, you know, in just a few minutes. So I dig that. Down here in the bottom, we do have 160 millimeter disc brakes. These are hydraulic disc brakes, which is great compared to mechanical disc brakes, which generally do not have as much of a grip, not as much stopping power as hydraulic. And what's great with um, hydraulic brakes like these right here, that little screw, by turning that, we can adjust the, the reach of the brake lever. So if I wanted to bring these brake levers in a little bit, I could do that. People with uh, larger hands, if they want to extend them, you can do that too. So that's a nice little feature right here. Really, I mean, this comes with quite a bit of stuff, I think, for, for the price point. I, there is quite a bit here. I mean, we've got these fenders. These are plastic fenders. This, these come along with the, um, with the bike. There's not an extra charge or anything. And there's, there's quite a few attachment points for these. So even though they are plastic, which does tend to rattle more than like steel or aluminum, they, they're, they're pretty quiet on the road. And I think it's because, again, there's multiple attachment points. So we've got one up here on the front and you know, and actually I'm gonna pause right here because one of the things that I really want this re review to, to serve as is also kind of a, a build guide for this because this bike did take me a while to build. It took me about three hours because there was quite a few pieces to assemble and the instructions weren't very clear. So when I get to points where I had trouble myself, I'm gonna stop and kind of just explain how I assemble something and hopefully that will help save you guys time on your end um, and hopefully some frustration for when you do when you do assemble this. So. This bracket right here, you'll see I put it on the front of the of the forks here. You can put it on the back, but the reason I put it on the front is because it, it scoots this fender forward just a little bit. And the reason I did that is because I even still with it in the forward position like that, I do get some foot strikes occasionally when I'm turning. You know, I hit kind of the, the back of the fender here. And I mean, I, I do have big feet. I got kind of like, <laughs> like hobbit feet. So you guys might not have that problem, but that's how it was depicted in the um, uh, in the instructions on how to assemble it, so that's how I wanted to do it. Now to get it on here like this, I had to actually bend this front bracket forward and deflate the tires all the way, and then basically just kind of like force this thing through this narrow gap, um, and then bend that piece back up, and that's how I assembled that, so yeah. But we do have attachment points for the fender, this front fender right here as well, right here on the fork and one on the other side. And this fork is steel, by the way, not aluminum. And that's nice because, I don't know if you can hear it, but listen, it's, it's pretty thick, it's pretty sturdy. Having a steel fork is nice because it does add a little bit of vibration dampening quality, especially since this bike is a, there's no suspension, it's a hardtail, no seat post suspension, um, high, PSI t high PSI tires, uh, 28 inches, uh, max out, maxes out at 85 PSI, you know, so there's not a lot of suspension quality um, in the tires, so having the steel fork, that's kind of a nice little thing. Now in the back here, for the rear fender, same thing, a lot of attachment points, and I like this. So we've got one down here, right here in the bottom, it attaches to the frame, just kind of squeezes in, um, one right here, and we've got one here in the back, that goes here, and there was also another arm that connects here, and also can come down and connect down here as well, but I did not find en enough screws to, to put that on, so I just, I just left it off, but even with this, I mean, this thing is, is pretty sturdy. It does not really bounce or rub against a tire when I'm riding. Up here on the handlebars, you'll see it's really basic. This is a really simple setup, guys. Um, this is a throttle only electric bike. So there is no pedal assist. There's no control center. There's no display. It's a super simple operation. You just hit the throttle and this, this, this throttle is live at zero miles per hour, which is nice. So I hit the throttle, this thing goes right off, right away, no delay. Um, but yeah, again, there's just not a lot up here. And the pro to that, I think, is this thing is really simple to use. It's just kind of, you know, you just hit the throttle and that's it, you know, basic. Um, the con, of course, is that, you know, there is no pedal assist. So if you do want to be using that, that's not really an option. And I found that, back to kind of assembly here, getting this, this throttle on was a little tricky. So how to get this thing on, I had to um, unscrew this left brake lever, slide the brake lever all the way towards the center of the handlebars, slide the grip all the way over to the middle of the handlebars, unscrew the locker, take everything off, and then and then put this on because there is no on this throttle. You'll see it's one it's one piece, so there's no 
there's no gaps in here. So it does, it does, it's not like this brake lever like this where it separates. You have to, it's just, it's solid, so it has to slip on. So once the throttle is on here, you can just work in reverse and basically put everything back on. So I put the throttle on the left simply because there's just not a lot of room here on the right. Like it would have to just reach a lot, like really far with my thumb. Even on the left right here, I noticed that it's a little bit far over and I, you know, if I hold it for a while, I will get a little bit of thumb strain in my tendon. It just feels like it's kind of hyperextending. So just something there. Now, this is cool. This is a adjustable stem right here. So on this side, we can see it goes from negative 10 you can lower this thing all the way down to negative 10 degrees and all the way up to 50 degrees of angle. So this is cool, um, basically because, again, this bike only comes in one frame size, right? But having this adjustable angle stem kind of means that we can I, I can compensate for that a little bit. So if I wanted to extend my reach a little bit, I could lower it. It's also going to lower my riding posture, make me more aerodynamic and kind of forward, lean, uh, forward leaning. Or if I wanted to, um, shorten my reach a little bit. I wanted more of a relaxed riding style, more upright and kind of just chill. I can just raise this thing up and I'll be sitting more upright like this. So a little bit of options there. One thing I want to call out about um, this, this adjustable stem here, this, this one's from Zoom. I've seen this one a few times now. There's only one point of contact here. Um, and it, that, that does mean that there's more of a potential for this for the stem to slip over time whereas some of the higher quality ones the more expensive ones they've got you know two points of contact two screws that go in and it just holds it in there you know it's really not going to move one last thing i want to point out about this stem is just make sure that this one is this this screw right here is tightened as well um, so this is this one is adjusting angle this one just kind of keeps it nice and tight right there so on this side we got the Shimano Olivio trigger shifter, which goes down to the Shimano Olivio derailleur. So this is a nine speed, and this is actually a pretty nice derailleur, and it's a pretty nice, they're pretty nice trigger shifters as well. This is, this is higher up um, on Shimano's lineup for derailleurs. So, you know, it goes to the Turney, the Altis, and it kind of works their way up. This one right here is just about into their mid-level, so almost out of the entry-level category and kind of into their mid-level. Mid -level. And I can see that when I shift gears with this thing, like it's definitely responsive, it's snappy, and it does a good job of just kind of really, I can, I can do two, three gears at a time and it just, it just pops in real quick. So that's kind of a nice little upgrade from this. And again, just one of those features where like along with the disc brakes, the hydraulic disc brakes, I'm just like, okay, that's, you know, some decent components on here want to go to this real quick so this is a aluminum kind of chain chain guard I guess you could maybe call it a bash guard it is only on this side so there's there's no chain guide on the other side here in the frame so this chain is it's possible for this chain to pop off towards the inside so just something to keep in mind here I mean this might also help keep the pants clean but more more over really what this is going to do is really help um, protect the the chain ring teeth against rock strikes you know or, or whatever hopefully there's not too many rock strikes on the road but you know it's there so whatever again this rack comes along with the with the bike so there's no up this is not an upgrade point it just comes along with it right out of the gate easy assembling this is was pretty easy um, but I do want to point out just a couple of quick things. So out of the box, um, this is not, you have to attach this yourself. I had to put this on. Um, these arms right here are kind of unscrewed and then they're forced back this way. So you just got to unscrew these right here, uh, lengthen these arms, attach it to the back of the frame. And then you'll see if you come down, these arms attach right here. So I put this one in that hole so you can, just so you can see right there and on the other side. This is how I attached it, right there. Back here, we've got a nine millimeter quick release skewer, which is nice. If I ever want to just take off the wheel for whatever reason, makes it you know, a lot easier. Up here in the front, we've got 12 millimeter nuts. So if I do want to take this off while I'm riding, I will have to carry tools with me to get this front wheel tire off if I want to take it off or change a flat, whatever. Um, yeah. Let's talk about the battery here. So this is the, the 36 volt 11 amp hour battery I was talking about. Now, getting this thing on was definitely a little tricky uh, to install this battery. So this is, again, this battery is something that 
it comes with the bike, but it does not come attached. So you really have to assemble just about everything on this bike. So to take the battery off, put in the key, give it a turn. Let's see if I can do this here. Hold on, give it a turn. Oh, that's not good. Well, hopefully I didn't just break it. Um, okay, so give it a turn like that. Don't drop it like I did because that's really not good for the batteries. But this is the battery right here. And you'll see that on this side is where it seats into the mounting bracket right here. Now, this is back to kind of one of the assembly things. So there are three eyelets or three kind of bosses right here to attach this mounting bracket um, that, is, that is attached to the controller here to the battery. When this bike ships, it came to me with three, so this was not attached, but it came with three screws already in these holes right here. And they were round head screws with two washers. So I tried to put those back in through here because I figured that's what they were for. Don't use those screws. Um, they're round head and they seat too far, too far up above the, the mounting bracket. You see how these flathead screws are flush, or almost, almost perfectly flush? These are the screws that you wanna use. Um, I only saw two of them in my packaging, but again, there are three holes, so hopefully that was just kind of like a thing of my packaging, but you know, there really should be three screws that goes along with this. To put the battery back in here, you wanna seat it almost to the bottom, and then just slide it in like that. Now, to turn on the battery, it's really pretty simple. It's really just this one button right here. And this is the only really kind of electronic feedback that this bike will, will give is the, the LED kind of battery indicator on the battery itself. It's a five bar battery indicator. To turn it on, just one press, little power button. I'm hoping you guys can see the, the LEDs kind of glowing right there. Now, there doesn't seem to be like an auto shut off or a timeout with this battery. So I, I tested it. I left it for about a half hour or so and just wanted to see if it would shut off and it doesn't. It just stays on, I think, kind of like in perpetuity until the battery drains. And that is one thing where I just want to caution where if you guys get this bike, just make sure to turn this off when you're done riding. Just like that, good to go. This is the charging port right here. charging port on the left hand side now with these keys right here I also want to also kind of just caution to you know for me I would I would definitely want to take these keys out like as soon as I'm done locking the battery in or taking it off and here's the reason why is because they're just really close to the cranks really close and I mean even right there you can see that there's they're actually touching right now so the last thing I would want is to forget that I have the keys in there turn the cranks and then like shear the key off or something that would just be <laughs> like that would just be trauma inducing. So t I'm taking out the keys right now, just for me personally, so I don't forget, I'm gonna leave them right here. Here is the battery charger. It's a kind of a cute little guy. It's a small one. It's a 1.8 amp hour charger, just slightly below average. Typically it's about a two amp hour output. Um, so this 36 volt, 11 amp hour battery, probably gonna take around, I don't know, four or five hours to charge this thing up with this thing. Um, I charge it from about 25% to full and it took me like four to five hours. Let's leave that right there. Uh, let's see, we do have a quick release on the seat post right here. Just makes um, adjustments on the fly pretty easy. This is a pretty active saddle right here. Um, it does have foam, but it did feel a little uncomfortable to me on a longer ride. I went for about 20 mile, 20 mile ride on this thing yesterday. And there's just a little bit of give on this. You kind of just a little bit of flex on the saddle. So yeah, shorter rides, no problem, longer rides. Uh, might get a little, a little uncomfortable, but yeah, I mean, overall, again, I just think that this bike is, this bike might work really, really well for those of you who this frame size is perfect for you. And for those of you who this, um, this color is perfect, right? Because again, one stop shop, get the frame, get the motor, put it together, good to go. However, I have to say again, if this frame doesn't fit somebody or if the color isn't to their liking. The other option, of course, is to just kind of go back to what Hilltopper started as, which is a kit company. Um, grab the frame of your choice and then, you know, throw your throw the kit in there and turn it into an electric bike. So yeah, oh, last thing, I gotta, I gotta call out this wiring here. So all the wires on this are, um, they are exposed. There's no internal wiring because really this is kind of just a regular bike frame that's been adapted to an electric bike. Kind of the only real uh, customization here are those three, uh, the three eyelets for the battery um, mounting right here, the mounting bracket. So there are 
kind of cable stays on the frame. I'll see if I can get a shot for you guys here. So you can see, you know, I routed the cables here. This is the power cable. It connects right here. And what's cool about this is there's, you know, one cable connects to the motor. The other side of this cable connects to the battery. And there's different, um, the, the prongs here are different on each one. So they only fit into the correct, into the correct port, which is nice. So here's the, the cable stays. I was able to kind of route it a little bit into those, but the cable on this, the power cable is, it's very long. Another biker, hi. <laughs> so the cables on this are, they're very long. And the reason for that is because Hilltopper wants to give customers an option of placing the battery here on the down tube, which I think is a good option personally for me because it does keep the bike relatively balanced. This thing weighs 45 pounds and with the kind of traditional top tube here, it's easy for me to pick this thing up. It doesn't really tip too much. Um, or though they want customers to be able to put it on the, the rear rack, which can be done with a, a separate mounting bracket, which again, I didn't see that in my packaging, but it's a mounting bracket that goes underneath here and the battery just goes on top. So, you know, that would be cool, I guess, if for people who want to, um, you know, to keep maybe the bottle cage bosses open, put a, put a bottle cage right here, um, or, but keeping on the down tube though, I think is just better to keep the lower, lower center of gravity and to keep the, the rack just free to, to use. So, yeah. So what I had to do with the cables here is basically, you know, once I fed them to the, cro to the correct um, ports here, plugged it in, you can see right here, I plugged it in, this feeds into the battery. I just had to kind of loop it back up like this, wrap it a few times, and then zip tie it to the frame. Um, and this does come with about 20 zip ties in the packaging. And I double checked with Hilltopper and that is what they recommend. So is it the most beautiful and elegant solution? No, is it effective? Yeah, I mean, these have not come loose. I've again, ridden about 20 miles in this thing. They're, they're, they're sturdy, it's just, you know, they're not internally routed. And that's just, I guess, kind of one of the, one of the, I guess the downsides of, of this bike. But again, you know, for 11.99, that's just one of the things. There's gonna to have to be some sacrifices and I think that's definitely one of them. I think the, the one frame size and the one color is kind of the other, kind of these big glaring ones. And of course, the fact that there is no um, pedal assist and no control center or display up here. So yeah, without any further ado, let's take this thing for a quick test ride. All right, so go ahead and take a listen to the motor here. Again, this is the, the front geared hub motor and this is throttle only activated and here we go. So as you can see, it's still pretty quiet. Now, one thing I do want to call out about the motor that I forgot to mention in the review portion is that there's no motor inhibitors on this, on the brakes. So when I hit the brake levers, that's not going to automatically shut off the motor. So just something to keep in mind. And then just a little bit of gear switching here. And here's what I was talking about with the front fender and how it could get in the way of my feet. So again, I have kind of bigger feet here, but you'll see if I turn this, I do get foot strikes depending on how far I turn and where my foot is during the turn. So again, just something to keep in mind with this here. So I'm just gonna ride for a minute here just so you guys can see the turning. Um, one thing with the hub motor in the front is it I can feel this weight of the motor. It's about, I think, nine extra pounds or something like that in the front and when I steer it's it's noticeable it's something that I, I can feel so here we go we're just gonna ride for a second Even still, as you saw right there, <laughs> trying to ride uh, with no hands for you guys. This does feel pretty stable though. All right guys, that is it for the Hilltopper City Ultra review. Just again, real quick to recap. Uh, this is a good bike, I think, that for people who want to do kind of mid to even longer commutes. Um, you do have the, the higher, the 28 inch tires, lower angle of attack in case you hit rocks and stuff. Um, decent size battery, 11 amp hours. And with the Shimano Olivio, um, 
trigger shifters and Shimano Olivia derailleur. It, like it's a pretty nice ride already. And then of course with the 350 watt motor and the throttle, it is enough to help boost up hills. The only thing I will say about longer rides though, is again, it can get a little uncomfortable. At least it did for me because there is no suspension, even though we do have the steel forks up here for the vibration dampening. Saddle gets a little bit uncomfortable over time and there is no rear suspension or seat post suspension. So yeah, um, I think this is a good value buy for what it offers. And I think that especially for those who do not need a 350 watt motor or do not need this bigger battery, you know, to be able to downgrade to the $899 version is, is really pretty sweet. So yeah, hope you guys have a great day. Hopefully you enjoyed that review. Maybe it was a nice little reprieve from the daily grind for you. And if you are going out to ride, have fun and ride safe.